Hello and welcome to AHDB Snapshots. My name is Susie Stanard from the Consumer Insight team at AHDB and I'd like to welcome you to a new edition in our series of Consumer Insight reports. Today we will be looking at how the trend towards veganism and more plant-based eating is fueling the development of a whole new food category and what this means for the meat and dairy sectors. Unless you were living in a cave last January, it won't have escaped your notice how much media attention there was around Veganuary. In fact, Google Trends showed that interest actually peaked at double the levels we saw back in 2017. According to the Vegan Food and Living website, 2018 saw a record number of sign-ups for Veganuary. In fact, approximately 150,000 people in the UK signed up this year. Contrary to what you might think, however, the vast majority of people in the UK are still eating meat. Only 2% say they are vegan. When we explore that in more depth by looking at food diaries which detail what they've actually eaten, Kantar World Panel have found that as little as 0.5% are actually fully vegan in their diet, excluding all meat and dairy products. People who are vegan tend to be London-based, young and female, and are most concerned about animal welfare issues, although they do see health and environment as concerns as well. Increasingly, we see that for younger people especially, food has become the new rock and roll. And for young people, veganism can be a badge of identity. Whilst in the past, young people clubbed together based on music or fashion, now what they eat defines who they are and sharing this on Instagram badges their digital identity as much as their physical one. But although there is certainly growing interest in veganism, actual numbers are still quite low. But over time, more people who eat meat say they're reducing their red meat consumption for health reasons. We can term these meat reducers flexitarians, as they are more flexible in their diets. And more food is now chosen for health reasons than ever before. Because of this, one in three evening meals are now actually meat free. In response to this, food manufacturers and retailers are looking for opportunities to tap into this trend. The developing market can be broken down into several key areas. First, plant-based ready meals such as Tesco's Wicked Kitchen are marketed as a healthier version of the traditional ready meals, being plant-based with lots of fresh vegetables. Secondly, the dairy alternatives market has continued to see double-digit growth, driven by new entrants to the market such as oats, coconut and almonds, whilst more established soya milk remains static. We've seen that only 22% of this consumption actually comes from vegetarians, and most buyers buy these products alongside real dairy. Plant-based meats, such as Beyond Burger and Impossible Burger, have certainly captured media headlines with their sensorial approach to replicating the flavours and textures of meat. These guys use heme iron and plant-based protein to create a product that actually bleeds. These products are aimed at flexitarians, with some retailers starting to stock them in the meat aisle alongside beef mints and steaks. Finally, cell-based meat is the one that has set the investment world ablaze. High-profile investors such as Bill Gates and Richard Branson are investing heavily, and even meat processors such as Tyson Foods are getting in on the act. These products promise all the taste of meat with no welfare concerns, much lower carbon footprint, and to reduce the industry's reliance on antibiotics. As yet, production is small-scale, and there are several technical problems to overcome, but we are likely to see costs coming down radically in the next few years. Taking these factors together, the push of people trying to reduce their meat consumption and the pull of new and exciting products taking protein beyond commoditisation, we see that plant-based eating is likely to be more than a passing fad. If you'd like to know more about these trends and products and how they will affect the market for meat and dairy in the com coming years, then please visit the link on our Consumer Insight page and download our more in-depth report where you can look at the implications for your sector.